All right, I'm gonna just do an update for this week's video. Um, been trying to save money because it's race season. So gotta put all my money in the race car. And uh, yeah, so I'll just give you a little tour of the shop. What's going on with all the other project vehicles? Um, I haven't really updated on any of the other stuff lately. So let's do that. So as you can see, I got a lift now. Thanks to my dad. So uh, that's pretty sweet. That's a 66 Chevy. It's pretty cool I'm putting power steering on it. Not mine. Matches my race car though. Uh, through the race car, things up there, the old doors. Engines out of this again, everything's painted. Uh, cleaned up all the old welds, all the stuff that I cut off. Um, gotta do heads for the engine. Uh, pull the other engine out. There's another short block. Uh, that's a 360 Magnum that's gonna go in my Dakota. Uh, bunch of other blocks that I got. 360, 360, 360, 360, 400, 2.5. Uh, I got a bigger air compressor now. Not that you guys care that much. I finally put steel down so I actually weld, but uh, it's got wood underneath it. So if it catches on fire, it catches on fire. Uh, fanned stuff. Uh, I got a big welder now. Um, this is a Harbor Freight one. It sucks. Don't buy it. I don't like the trigger setup on the gun. Uh, this is my Tobit ARP. So this is like the same thing as the Sunnen. I haven't really showed this. Then I bought this the other day. This is the Sunnen uh, digital angle finder. That was 400 bucks. I paid just for that. Um, I can't remember how much I paid. I can't remember if I paid like 1200 bucks for this thing. I think it was like 1200 bucks. But uh, I got the Goodson three angle valve cutter for it. Uh, I got an eight millimeter pilot and a uh, three eighths pilot for small block Mopar. I need a 516 so I can do Magnums. Um, eight millimeter works for Hemi's. Uh, it's a 308. Look at this thing. This thing is chewed up big time. Uh, that's a good set of 308s. I gotta send those to Bruce Toth. I picked up this valve grinder the other day. Um, I need to figure out a coolant pump setup for it. It works everything in that, and I need new grinding stones for it. But the old coolant pump, it ran off the motor, and I guess had an impeller on there, but that's long gone. So I don't know if they're just using it dry. But I got all this stuff. So all, everything you see here pretty much, other than the Sawzall blades, but this valve spring test, we put a torque wrench in there. It's kind of a weird setup, but it's for free. Uh, that's for seat grinding. Um, and then there's the pilots for that. And then that air hammer and stuff to drive guides in. But I got all this stuff for 800 bucks, table life and that magnet. So that's for like, see, checking for cracks and stuff. So I need to get the, that yellow powder that you see. I don't know if you've seen it before, but there's yellow powder. You sprinkle it on a head, put that magnet on it, and it'll suck all that yellow powder into the um, into the crack, so it's easier to see. Uh, that's my boring bar, 944S. Um, that's the tooling and stuff for it. <clears throat> um, that's my heavy, my 392. Then this is my sudden... I don't think it's an 1800, I forget what it is, but I'll have to look it up off the top of my head. And then I got an AG300. I got a really good deal on this. I paid 800 bucks for this, and I got this all up here. It's all full of mandrels and stuff. So, uh, but they're all really small, so not really good. But the guy I got it from, he uh, he gave me one for the big end of a small block Mopar rod, so that's pretty sweet. But uh, this isn't really something to use a lot, and I can't resize rods because I don't have a cap cutter. So if I get new rods and they're tight, then that's the only time I can really use this till I get a cap cutter. And then the boring bar, like I can just, I can bore blocks, but I can't like finish hone them. So it kind of just tells me if the block's good. I mean, obviously eventually I'll build it all up and I'll get a hone and cap cutter and all that stuff. But just for right now, I can just see the blocks. And then once I get this all back together, then I can grind new valve or grind old valves. So I don't have to buy new valves for heads. And then I can recondition old Mopar heads because I have a bunch of them. And then I can sell them. But good valve jobs and portable stuff and do all that cheap because I enjoy doing that stuff. So if you want some heads from me, let me know. There's the other door. Um, yeah, race car. A bunch of carburetors over there that I've been collecting. My Excel super coil. That's going to go on the Valari. I guess I haven't really shown this truck either. This is my 2009 uh ram 2500 it's got a 6.7 in it i traded one of my 24 valves for this or my only 24 valve because 24 valves suck and uh it's two-wheel drive four-door long bed so that's what i wanted just haul the race car with 
like trailers so then I can put people in and bring them to the races and if it's a truck you gotta have a long bed because I don't know why you'd want a short bed truck they're pretty much useless once you put a toolbox in them uh tires off the race car I still gotta wash them my pressure washer that froze so I broke the pump off the back living in Texas still got screwed by the cold Valari edges out of it uh I want to paint the engine bay and stuff like that um well I get around to it I don't know probably probably not also got to lower the k-frame I need to put like a spacer in between the k-frame and the frame rails uh because it's a you can't get to those balancing bolts and I mean you literally cannot get to them you can't put a bolt in them even like out of the lift and everything it's it's not happening uh my 12 valve that's still here still pretty as ever uh, this is 450 horsepower now. Like if you go off the ratings from power driven diesel, I did the fuel kit for that. We need the bigger turbo. It gets, the EGTs get super hot, super fast, but I don't know why I didn't do a video on this. I should have, but yeah, it's got new injectors, put new head gasket, new head bolts, power driven diesels, head bolts in it, uh, delivery valves, governor's brake. So it turns like 4,300 now. It, it goes a lot better than it did. Uh, it's hoping to be like a little bit faster, but I don't know. Maybe I'm used to stuff like this. But, uh, yeah, it's still cool. Still fun truck. All right, then we got Sexy Red over here. This thing is uh, quite the unit. Uh, those wheels are off of that truck. I was driving in my backyard. I got a little track back there. And I ran over a pipe, and it blew both the right side tires. So now it has that on it. Uh, I cut the exhaust off. That was the first thing I did when I lift. As soon as I got it up, I put this up there on the lift, cut that off. Uh, did that. So now it sounds a little bit better. Uh, I welded the diff this weekend. So, uh, it looks like that's sprayed. Nah, it's just mud. All right, we're good. Yeah, look at this sweet exhaust setup. Just held up by wire. Pretty good. Uh, oil pressure, definitely not good on this. Uh, starting to get worse now. So going down the road, it has like the oil pressure light comes on. So it has nothing even going down. It's got a high volume pump in it. All the bearing clearances were good. So I think it's gotta be cam bearings. I don't know, who knows. But this thing, this thing still in a disarray. This is what the Hemi's going into and the T56. There's some heavy heads in there. Uh, I don't know if the bell housing's still in here, but I got videos on all the other stuff that I've done to this thing. Um, I actually daily drive this one. It's fun because I can just beat the shit out of it. But the uh, front clip's off because I was cleaning up the firewall. I want it to look really nice inside the firewall, not inside, inside the engine bay. So I gotta finish sanding all this someday. But uh, pretty much I just need an oil pan and uh, heads and I can drop the engine in it and the transmission and start mocking all that stuff up. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna have to, I didn't think about this when I was cleaning all this up, if I'm gonna have to cut that out more to fit the T56. I don't think I'll have to, to be honest, but it all depends how much those holly mounts raise it up. But uh, the cross member, you can't really tell but they're really far back like compared to the engine mount so you need like a rear sump pan that has like a little sump if you ever look at dakota v8 pans they're kind of a pain but uh yeah i got a whole bunch of videos on this thing like when i first started my youtube channel but one day one day it'll be done maybe but yeah if you have any questions about anything you want any videos on anything uh just let me know maybe i'll do a video of a bunch of burnouts and drifts with this hunk of shit